the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados, Dr. Mukisa Kitui, Secretary General of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, Ambassador Chad Blackman, Permanent Representative of Barbados to the United Nations in Geneva, Ambassadors and Representatives of UNCTAD Member States, Members of the National Organizing Committee for UNCTAD 15 and their counterparts in the UNCTAD Secretariat, Members of the Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good morning from Barbados. I'm Sharon Marshall. There have been many developments since we last gathered on August 4th to sign the host country agreement signaling the commitment of the government of Barbados to host the 15th quadrennial conference of UNCTAD. Some of those developments have had an impact on planning for the conference, chief among them the COVID-19 pandemic. This morning, Prime Minister Motley and Secretary General Kitui will update you on preparations for UNCTAD 15. I now invite Dr. Kitui to address you. Uh, Your Excellency, Right Honorable Mayor Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados, uh, Excellencies, uh, members of the Trade and Development Board, permanent representatives, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, um, may I also bid you welcome to this uh, brief session. I want to take the opportunity first and foremost to express the appreciation of the Secretariat of UNCTAD to Your Excellency, Prime Minister Matley, for your commitment and availability when you have had a lot of challenges to deal with in uh, what aptly can only be known as an annus horribilis, uh, but that you have had uh, taken time off to engage us and see how we progress on our promise to host a successful UNCTAD 15 conference. Over the past few months, we've been engaging, driven by a shared vision. Importantly, that the 15th UNCTAD conference must be an in-person conference, among other things, to guarantee the presence of high-level leaders with the political will and gravitas to make definitive, substantive decisions that will shape international discourse on how to recover better out of the pandemic that we confront today. I want to express our appreciation by the singular commitment to this principle that you and your government have shown during our deliberations. As mentioned by Sharon Marshall, our teams have been working together. I want to express my appreciation on behalf of the Secretariat of Unchart for the patience, engagement, and willingness to go the extra mile that has been displayed by the team both at headquarters and your team in Geneva led by the very able and friendly Ambassador Chad Blackman, uh, which has been very, very helpful as we all try to ride out very uncertain times and try to fulfill our obligations to member states and to the promise we made to the people and government of Barbados to be true partners and deliver a successful conference. During the part period since we last had a joint event, in early August to sign the host country agreement, we at the UNCTAD Secretariat have had to do the necessary, bring in the different agencies of the UN family as, as procedurally expected of us to assess the state of play in the preparations for the conference, the assessment of uh, UN standards on health of uh, citizens of the host country, traveling participants and delegates, and the, the engagement on the key issues that are emerging from such conversation with the, the host government. And this morning, I addressed the opening session of the preparatory committee, the negotiations of the outcome document for UNCTAD 15. And in addressing them, I mentioned that uh, you, Prime Minister, and I were going to have an ultimate meeting today at which we'll share with the world the outcome of the multiple consultations we've been having between your capital and Geneva, but also the UN in New York. And it's now my pleasure, not only to thank you for your patience and your leadership, but now to invite you and share with the member states online and the media around the world the steps that we've been taking and the decision that we have joined the made. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kitui. Prime Minister. 
Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, Secretary General Kitui, my brother, I'm pleased to be able to meet with you again, if only virtually, and regrettably for reasons that we both hoped could have been avoided. I also welcome today's opportunity to speak directly to member states, UNCTAD secretariat officials, and indeed the media, but also to the people of Barbados. I think it is important that we bring you fully up to date on the latest developments on what could perhaps best be described as a roller coaster ride on the way to UNCTAD 15. As you are well all aware, it was back in June 2019 that the Trade and Development Board first accepted the offer of the Government of Barbados to host the 15th session of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. It seems like almost a lifetime ago, given that everything that has happened since then has consumed us, as you know. At the time, my government enthusiastically embraced the challenge of becoming the smallest member state ever to hold on an UNCTAD session. Our national planning structure was fully deployed by the beginning of 2020, and the host country and the UNCTAD Secretariat organizing teams immediately began to coordinate their efforts on both sides of the Atlantic. And then, up, up comes COVID. By March, we were all in various stages of lockdown, and by April, as you recall, Secretary General, you and I consulted, and we accepted the disappointing reality that it would be impossible to proceed as normal. We recognized then that there was no immediate remedy to the disruption the pandemic was causing to global travel, as well as to the substantive negotiating process in Geneva. People were consumed with other things. Accordingly, on April 24th, we jointly announced that UNCTAD 15 could no longer take place from October 18th to 23rd, 2020, as had been originally scheduled. We were, however, hopeful that by the end of this summer, the pandemic would begin to recede. And so after careful consideration and consultation between ourselves and the UNCTAD membership, we agreed to reschedule to the new dates of the 25th to the 30th of April. On August 5th, when we announced the rescheduled timing, I told you that we remain positive that by next year, the determined efforts of world scientists and the prudent precautionary measures we were putting in place would help to make the convening of UNCTAD 15 a reality. We were certainly not wrong about the determined efforts of world scientists whose progress on the development, testing and delivery of the vaccines has been nothing short of phenomenal. We were, however, perhaps a little too optimistic about exactly when in 2021 a COVID safe global environment would emerge. We were certainly in no position at that stage to foresee the virulence of the second wave of infections that would sweep through Europe and North America as winter approached. We see it before our very eyes on a daily basis. Still, we at the Barbados End did not lose faith and we continue to project and to have contingency plans for the April date, waiting for a silver lining to emerge from the clouds. Our reality as a small tropical island with limited ports of entry has been far different from what many others have been facing. The overwhelming majority of our population, thankfully, and I thank Barbadians again, have heeded to the COVID-19 protocols to wear masks and to sanitize, as well as to social distance. As a consequence, the country has managed to remain out of lockdown since the 15th of June of this year. I thank the disciplined and responsible attitude of Barbadians, and I thank the diligent monitoring and, and those who have gone way beyond the call of duty in our health sector and our border authorities. There has been to date, as a result, no community spread within our country. Indeed, the handful of imported cases that are registered every week are rapidly detected through mandatory testing, particularly our second test and our quarantine facilities, and immediately, if necessary, placed into isolation at designated facilities. We were therefore confident that once we continued the strict enforcement of our protocols, Barbados could create a secure biosphere from airport to hotels 
and ultimately to the conference venues. This would have allowed us to host UNCTAD 15 in a manner that would have minimized the risk to the health and safety of visiting delegates and indeed to Barbadians alike. We immediately set out to explore a range of innovative possibilities with our tourism and our health officials with this objective in mind. Yet, despite our best efforts, the second wave of COVID-19 infections has grown more intense and more deadly in hotspots across the globe. It became increasingly apparent that however safe we believe Barbados to be, and however much effort we put into keeping it so, as we are doing, this could not of itself motivate participants to travel to our country in the numbers to transact the important business of UNCTAD 15 in a meaningful way. That is, through fully participatory in-person sessions, face to face. Nor could we, simply by wishful thinking, counteract the apparent deficit in the substantive preparatory process at the Geneva end, where progress has been severely impacted by the continual lockdowns and by the difficulties of pursuing intense negotiations in six languages across a virtual platform. We need to have taken that into account. We all accept that for UNCTAD 15 to be successful, it must have strong levels of in-person attendance in Barbados and equally strong policy proposals that would form the basis for deliberation and action by our ministers. At this juncture, we have regrettably concluded that neither can be guaranteed in time for April 2021. We have recently also been advised of a crucial fact that is beyond the control of the host country. Namely, that if UNCTAD 15 is convened in April 2021 in the manner and the scope originally planned, it would be categorized as high risk by the Occupational Safety and Health Office of the United Nations. We have been assured that this classification is in no way determined by the COVID-19 profile of Barbados, but rather by the possible dangers posed to the local population the incoming participants and the UNCTAD staff from the influx of several thousand participants from multiple locations across the globe. This means, in effect, that we could only proceed under UN guidelines which would reduce permitted physical attendance at the conference to such low numbers and such low levels as to seriously compromise its viability and its ultimate success. Given this unfortunate reality, the Secretary General and I have come to the difficult conclusion that we have no choice but to seek a further postponement of UNCTAD 15. As host country, my government does not wish to put at risk the momentum that has been generated thus far by the preparatory process in Barbados, nor indeed the excellent ideas produced by our lead organizers for the six forums that we have planned as the major side events. We especially do not wish to dampen the enthusiasm and investment and involvement and investment of the people of Barbados in this important endeavor. At the same time, however, we are agreed, all of us, that we cannot plan effectively in an environment of uncertainty. The new dates we select should therefore be in a time frame that we can reasonably expect to be COVID safe based on the best available expert projections today for the uptake of vaccines over the coming months. With these considerations in mind, my friends, and after a review of the crowded calendar of international meetings now scheduled or indeed rescheduled for 2021, the Secretary General and I have agreed to propose that UNCTAD 15 should now take place in Barbados from Sunday, October 3rd, to Friday, October 8th, 2021, with pre-events starting from Friday, October 1st. We are confident that, given these unprecedented circumstances, member states will give us their support for the convening of the conference on these new dates, and that we can count on their full and active participation in October next year in Barbados. My country remains fully committed 
to fulfilling its responsibilities as the host country of UNCTAD 15. I cannot deny that planning this event in the throes of a global health and economic emergency has been a logistical nightmare for both of our teams. Yet, like with all things, we must persist and we shall persist and we shall prevail. As I said to you in August, this crisis provides us with an unprecedented opportunity through bold and decisive leadership to make UNCTAD 15 a transformational conference with transformational outcomes. Indeed, I truly believe that the moment is now for UNCTAD with its unique history in support of developing countries to step up and to take its place at the forefront of new and serious efforts to rethink the development paradigm. I've been speaking about it for the better part of the last year. Now is the time for radical transformation of the decades old assumptions that have hitherto underpinned the international economic order. An order that, as I've said before, persists more to perpetuate inequalities than to serve the critical needs of too many of us across the global community. Institutions that existed now that when they were formed, our countries did not even exist in many instances. And therefore the reality and perspective that we must reflect upon as we move beyond the third decade of the 21st century has to re literally reflect our circumstances, our needs, and our deep concern about the unjust inequalities that grip our world today. We believe that moral and ethical leadership must matter and that we must work together. And if we can work together in the vein of moral and ethical leadership as committed leaders, then I truly believe that we can be the difference that the world is crying out for at this stage. I thank you all and I look forward to engaging with you soon again on the road to Barbados in October 2021. We shall make it and we shall get there. Thank you. Prime Minister, and thank you, Dr. Kitui. I don't know if you wish to make any concluding remarks. I will give you that opportunity now. No, we're, well, thank you so much, both lady and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings our brief program to a close. We thank you all for participating and wish you a good day. We also wish you all the very best for the holiday season. We see you in Barbados next year.